AMT's 1960 Ford Starliner Custom, coming up next on Monster Hobbies, What's in the Box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, Monster Hobbies fans. Are you ready to see another great unboxing on this wonderful channel that you subscribe to? Well, I sure hope so, because today I got a special treat. This is the 1960 Ford Starliner Custom from AMT Ertl. Very cool kit. I remember when this one was new. In fact, I bought this when this was new. So you're looking at the first edition of this kit ever made by AMT. And I know that Round 2 has re-released this thing with some more mustel mustelgic, nostalgic artwork, which is really, really cool. So. Keep in mind that this is the predecessor to the modern kit, but we are going to look at it. However, before we do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Click the notification bell so that every time we do a brand new What's in the Box, you don't get to miss out on seeing the contents of this thing. And let's get this video up to 100 likes so that it catches on into the Google feed world and more and more people can see it and share it and enjoy this video as you are right now. So without further ado, let's go down and open up the lid on this beauty and see what's in the box. So slip back into the time machine and let's go all the way back to 1960 as we unbox the Ford Starliner Coupe by AMT. Okay, just gonna wait. Let's show you the box. So, this is of course from 2001, and as you can see, the box art is very simple. This is from the round two days or RC2, sorry. <laughs> and as you can see, like there's the side rear three quarter and the front three quarter, and a little bit of detail inside. Skill level two kit, ages 10 and up. Very simple. So taking the lid off the box, we will look at these parts in a minute. I'll just move that and look at the instructions here. So this was a Christmas present from my wife in 2003 when we were like first married. Oh, those were the days. <coughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, let me just zoom back a little. Let's get the full scope of these instructions. So as you can see here, this is a nice multi-part engine with all the components all exploded out. Very much like the monogram kits. You've got your cylinder heads in the piston chambers. And of course, you have your rocker <coughs> up there in the cylinder heads. Sorry, I got a bit of a flu. It's a weird kind of flu. It's not sneezing, but it's like all of my muscles are congested really hurts. Anyway, you got this nice tri-carburetor, uh, tri-carburetor manifold and system. Really cool. Thunderbird valve covers. AMT really put in a lot of effort in this era to uh, make these model kits fantastic because they were competing against Tamiya, Japan, and Ravel Monogram. It's sort of a wave that was going on back in this time period. So really, really good. Actually, this might be pre-RC2. Can't quite remember. Like I say, got the flu. <clears throat> and in here, they give you all the paint color combinations. So if the overall body was Corinthian white, these are all the accent colors that the car came with. And that sort of thing. Monte Carlo red had black accents or beige accents or pale yellow over dark blue and two-tone interior colors so very cool and then of course you get your interior here and look at how many parts are there and again separate molded sidewalls much like our 59 Ford of last week only this is now the new version where they're doing this for high detail <laughs> oh. Okay, so we've got our uh, suspension here with the upper and lower A-arm type with our spindles in the center, the upper control arm there, 
spindle spring lower control arm and of course the perimeter frame and there again we've got the, the rear axle differential so drive shaft differential cover the, all the rear springs and the stabilizers shock mount points very good let's turn this around to the back you can see the interior clamshell goes together it's not really a clamshell you had an upper and lower gas tank in there and nice frame those custom wheels then under the hood separate radiator wall with a separate radiator top and all your hood latch assemblies battery the uh, double radiator hoses master cylinder then we get into the body how it goes together see there's a lot of work there and I do believe this is the one where they've got the countersinked windshield on the inside of the A pillars so when you push it in the windshield kind of clicks into place which on most models earlier models it doesn't eh? and then we got our hood detail with hood springs and uh, mirrors and windshield wipers and all the rest followed by how the back goes together so again this is one of those classic engineered well-designed engineered kits of that era now let's go over and look at the individual parts all right so surprise on me I found out that I actually started to work on this model a little bit which might not be too bad for a review right now anyway this is the body of the Ford Sunliner Starliner Starliner Anyway, <clears throat> as you can see, it is a nice molded body. It's got the little hole locations for your door handles and your windshield wipers and antennas and that. I guess the nice thing about this is you could tell there was a sink mark there and a couple sink marks here and here, which of course I'm filling with putty. Some old Tamiya gray putty that I no longer have. You can see the nice ridge detail in the side panel here. Good place for your bare metal foil. It's got the nice little three stars going up on the roof, roof pillars. So if you turn it over, you can see they've got the upholstery pattern in the uh, headliner here, as well as the dome light and your sun visors, which are molded up, which it's okay. It would be kind of nice if they were molded uh, as separate parts where you could position them up and down and that sort of thing. But, you know, the fact that they're there is a lot better than them not being there. And then there's two pins here in the front and two in the rear for mounting your windshield and rear glass. Um, no, it doesn't look like the, they're countersunk on the pillars inside. I guess I was a little wrong on there. But still, <clears throat> it does make a nice kit. Nice molding. <laughs> All right. Now to complete that body, we have, of course, the hood. It's got a nice little Ford emblem that they were using back in the day, molded into the hood here. And if you flip it over, you can see all the, the uh, cross beams and stuff underneath. Now these dots here are, of course, um, from the mold itself, whoops. <laughs> and you'll have to scrape them off. I usually use the number 16 X-Acto blade, sort of the chisel point one. So let's see how this hood fits into our body here. It fits really, really well. It doesn't help that I squeeze there. Okay. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, fit and finish is really nice on there. Uh, that's just sliding forward. There's uh, not too bad of a gap. Of course, you, if you really look, you can see that this line kind of wavers a bit because they always mold the hood on the parts tree with the big tab sitting right there so when you go to cut it off it's very hard to get that like perfectly to that contour but you know we all do the best we can so there's the hood on the body all right so now we're going to look at the undercarriage here and as you can see, there's, again, a lot of really nice crisp detail in here. And if we turn it upside down, 
or to the other side, you can now see the interior component of this. They have the floor mats there and there, and of course a nice transmission hump. And if you feel it, there's a mild bit of upholstery for the carpeting sitting there. So what I want to do now is, let's see, show you the seats. And as you can tell, there's quite a lot of nice pleating on there. And if you notice, they will sit onto this back piece nice and well. Now I did glue the front and back seat together. Sounds like we're getting some rain outside. Okay, and then you see that goes in pretty nicely. Then we've got our door panels here. And as you can tell, the, again, nice crisp casting on the door panels. And you got your windshield, or window winders and armrests all molded in, which could have been separate parts, but you know, it's, you can get your bare metal foil around them. You see it fits nicely in there, the little pins. Okay. <laughs> and of course we have the opposite driver's side. And if you look on the back, there's some nice ribs on there to help with the integrity of the part. So just leave there. And then we have a front firewall with all the nice wires and everything going to the heater motors and the horns and that. And again, we see some of that ribbing on the back. This will go right there. And there's a nice fit in between here and here to the front of the engine bay. Then of course we have our dashboard here and as you can tell there's a lot of cool instruments on that instrument panel. We got the uh, the vents molded in right in there and your pedals so you know this is a standard and that will just sit in there goes in to the upholstery on the sides the door panels and you notice there's a little groove in there where it's going to sit which locks in with this so you get a nice glueable fitting surface and then we've got our steering column with the old gear shift on the tree three on the tree whatever and somewhere is the steering wheel which we'll discover later so next up we have the frame of the car and as you can see there's a lot of little in uh, alignment holes and everything for all the components to fit in. The rear springs here and various other components. And what's nice about this is it's a separate frame. And of course your engine mounts. Separate frame and there's the rest of the undercarriage of the car. And as you can see here, it clicks in really nicely and tight to the actual uh, chassis, undercarriage, whatever. So yeah, AMT in this era really made some great kits. Have you built some? What do you think of them? I'll be building this later. But anyway, you can see how good that fit and finish is on there. And speaking of undercarriage components, here we have the top and bottom of the gas tank or the bottom and top of the gas tank, however it goes together. But you can see that they got all the rib detail in here, which is really nice, and the, the buttons on the top, which one of them would be the fuel gauge, uh, fuel gauge sending unit and that sort of thing. And then if we look over here, we've got the A-arms and our steering linkage, and of course the stabilizer bar for the front suspension piece. And these are the hood hinges. And again, very, very nice. Now I think this was where the hood was mounted. Something in there like that, eh? <laughs> but anyway, not too important. So now we have the rear axle here and the differential cover, the little Ertl logo a drive shaft, and some of the underhood components. 
as you can see on the differential here, this is upside down actually. Let's just turn it around. There. Oh, and this is the battery and these are license plate shrouds. So anyway, there's a lot of detail on the differential cover, little ribs and bolts and things. And then on the differential itself, it has the brake cable lines going out to the uh, rear wheels. So highly detailed, a lot of good effort going into this model kit. Okay, so now we're looking at the uh, components here. Some are from under the hood, like these wires here, or fuel lines, or whatever they are. Radiator hose, another hose. Um, now here you've got your springs and your upper A-arms and those uh, spindles there. And we notice we've got four-wheel drum brakes on here, which is true to the actual real car, and some wheel retainers there. But the detail on these brake, brake backings are very, very nice. They've got the two things in here and all the rest. So really good stuff. So now we have the sprue with our engine components on it. And I made a mistake in the video a little earlier. I said it was a tricarb option. You actually have two. You got the big dual four barrels and the three two barrel carburetors. So you've got your choice of either one. And the other one could make a pretty nice display on its own. So starting over here, Actually, it's interesting how they laid this out. So here is the bottom of the air cleaner for the tricarbs, and here's the, the three carburetors here. Okay, and that's the top of the three carburetors. Over here, we've got the bottom of the three carburetors where they're gonna mount into here. So interesting how they did that. Now here we got the two four barrel carburetors and the four barrel intake. Uh, intake manifold, pardon me, and then the bottom of the four barrel carburetors are over here. And then, we, of course, we've got the intake manifold with the tricarbs here. And now these are the big headers that they have on the engine for your exhaust. And then we get into the cylinder heads, the oil pan. Um, I'm not sure what these are. <laughs> anyway, oh, starter motor and that kind of stuff, right? Then um, the timing chain cover, the water pump, distributor, um, oil, fil uh, what do you call it, where you pour the oil in. Boy, I'm really bad today. <laughs> uh, fan belts, the top of the radiator, the bottom of the radiator with nice detail, and of course the left and right hand sides of the engine block. So that is all the under the hood parts. This sprue contains the springs and the shock absorbers for the rear. This sprue contains the exhaust to the rear mufflers, the uh, shift linkage for the transmission and the stabilizers or the shock absorber spring things for the rear axle. So next we'll take a look at the chrome parts tree, which is really well done. We've got our rear bumper and the rear insert, the front bumper, the front grille, windshield wipers, door handles, the American five-star mag wheels, the Thunderbird valve covers. Now there's two sets here. One has Thunderbird written on it and the other one is just left blank. There's the exhaust uh, lake pipes. Then we have a column shifter uh, which is mounted on the floor and the air cleaner and then of course the custom steering wheel, chrome fan, a couple more latches, the mirror bits and somewhere on here should be, I don't see them, but they should have actual reflectors for those mirrors. And maybe you can see them on there, I don't. Oh, and I think that's an antenna there.
Next up, we have the glass components. And I think this bent, it was still warm from the factory. And when they, you know, took it off the tree, it bent up a little. But this is the front windshield. This is the back piece of glass. And you get your quad headlights in there, which was popular back in that era. Now we get into the tires. And these are pretty cool ones. I remember when these came out. I think it was about 1998, if I remember right. But the kit they came with was the re retooled Ford Fairlane, 1966 Ford Fairlane. And these are the Firestone wide oval tires that they came out with back then. It's nice to see them in this kit. These ones have a groove in here, so if you want to have red line tires, red wall tires, you can paint red paint in there and then wipe it off and it, the red will stick in that groove which is pretty nice and they have a I don't know if I can pick this up right there nice tread pattern there on the sides sort of the wavy wavy tread pattern and of course uh, you can't really make it out too well but there's the wide oval part there and firestone on this end and a bunch of the wheel details tire details so these were really nice tires back in the day because all AMT had sort of prior to this was the BF Goodrich tires with that kind of looked more like off-road tires but the standard one was the Goodyear Polyglass GTs and uh, those are in almost every AMT kit if you needed wide tires so when they brought out the Firestone wide oval in this it was like a revolution in AMT model car tires you know of the time so nice to see these in this kit as well then finally molded in red plastic are the two rear taillights which is interesting because the back end of this has four red taillights but they only had two in the kit okay well looking at the box art here i guess they're not really meant to be four red taillights it's just somebody painted the backup lights red so yeah okay amt was right by molding in two and finally we get these three sets of license plates now the top ones look like they're bicentennial ones which is a little bit strange considering that this is 1960 and the bicentennial was in 1976 um and yeah i'm a canadian and i know that <laughs> but anyway um so then you could always build a car that's like 16 years older and put these on it, I guess. Then there are some Colorado plates, the GA-1016, and New York ones, BAJ-263. So this is what you get in the kit. And that will conclude our review of the AMT 1960 Ford Starliner Custom. Well, I hope you enjoyed that wonderful review of the 1960 Ford Starliner by AMT. T, the custom edition. I always wanted the stock edition in this year, but I, I never actually was able to afford one because it was sort of one of those kits where some hobby shops had it and then some had this. And then when you wanted to go to the one that you thought had the stock one, you came across this one and vice versa. So it was kind of a hard one to track in the day. But I do believe round two has re-released this thing. So maybe I'll try to get it again under the new round two version. But anyway, you don't want to miss the next video coming up. We're going to be taking a look at the 1960 Chevy Custom Fleet Side. How do I know that? Because I've got it on the table over there. <laughs> but you won't be able to see it till next week. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends and family. Click that notification bell because you don't want to miss seeing the 1960 Chevy by AMT. That'll be next week. But you won't know unless it gets notified right in your YouTube box. So keep that in mind. Uh, like, subscribe, and share, of course, again. If I said that three times, I don't know. I can't remember now. Uh oh But I do know what I haven't said. Let's get this thing up to 100 likes so that everybody can see this video in their Google feed when they type in 60 Ford Starliner Custom. And uh, on that note, we will see you next week.